Yeah, we all know electrics are coming, but before we get there, we'll have to deal with hybrids. Now, hybrids are a combination of an internal combustion engine and an electric motor to get the best of both worlds. And Toyota has given us one such SUV, and that's the Urban Cruiser High Rider. Now, this SUV, it will take on the likes of the Creta, the Seltos, and other such compact SUVs. So, let's go check it out. Hi, my name is Dhruv Aliwal. You're watching AutoX, and today, we're dealing with the Toyota Urban Cruiser Hybrid SUV. Alright, so we've got the Urban Cruiser High Rider to us. There's a lot of people who want to check out the car. So let's just quickly show you what it looks like first. Now, uh, as you can see, starting, there's this nice tall bonnet here. It's a smooth line. There's not a lot of character lines over there. So it gives you this sense of uh, very calm, a very flowing design. If you come down, you'll see over here that the front grille, the top half of the front grille is pretty much blocked out. You only get this small intake over here. And I really like this pattern on the grille, which it, it's not carbon fiber or anything like that. It doesn't even kind of look like that, but it does remind you of that. There's this weave of plastic inside and it's got this lacquer finish on top of it. Looks really nice. Then you have these sleek LED DRLs over here. They're the turn indicators. They'll double up. You've got your headlamps over here. And then you've got this large air dam down below before you have this chin spoiler over here, which is finished in gray. Now, honestly, first thing first, I have to say, we've got two cars over here. One of them is finished in red. The other one, it's finished in blue. And both of them, under these showroom lights, they at least look fantastic. Now, let's come to the side over here. Uh, we've got 17 inch alloy wheels. Now, this is a dual tone alloy look, and it's quite common, but it looks nice with the car. Uh, it doesn't feel under tired, although an 18 inch uh, wheel over here would have pulled out this wheel well quite well and it would have given the Urban Cruiser High Rider a much more imposing stance. So as you move to the side, you get this really nice hybrid badge on the side and as you know, this car is in hybrid, we'll get to the specs just in a little while. So that's that. Uh, the OR, ORVM, you've got a dual tone finish on this car, so there's black on the top, uh, also on the pillars and on the ORVMs. And then uh, as you come down, you've got this nice line of chrome that follows the window line and comes all the way till the back. Uh, as you approach the back, now we don't have a lot of space here, but I do want to show you some things over here. You've got this nice Toyota logo sitting right in the center. You've got a belt of chrome, uh, which is going out on both sides from it. Then you have these nice C-shaped LED DRLs, but they've been really sleekly done. So they look a lot different than other cars, which have these kind of C-shaped elements. Uh, that is there. Uh, you've also got this hybrid badge. Uh, on the bootlet over here to tell the people that you are driving a green car and then there are your indicator lights uh, and your reversing fog lamp lights that are all here in this cluster so let's now that we are at the back let's just show you the boot also okay i've opened the boot now first things first the boot is not what you expect it's actually a little uh, it rises a little above this loading lift so you have lesser space than you want and honestly with these flaps here in place you have a little bit of space underneath all of underneath which is your jack and uh, but you won't find the rear tire uh, the spare tire over here because that's been tucked underneath so if you do ever get a puncture you're gonna have to do a lot of effort to get that out Boot space is the one thing I think uh, from the looks of it, prima facie, it's not going to be a lot, uh, at least on this hybrid version, which is where the reason why they have a lot of uh, this space taken over. We Once we do check out the uh, non-hybrid, that is the mild hybrid version, and we'll see if the boot space is still the same in that one, we will let you know that. But at least for the hybrid version, this boot, it's not going to be enough. Because once I put it in, you'll probably be able to pack in a couple of suitcases and maybe a backpack or two okay uh, now that we've done with how the car looks uh, there's still some people inside so we'll just take some time and tell you the specs of the car all right we've shown you what the car looks like but now let's come to the specs and the specs are really important because this it's an hybrid you get two engine options both of them are petrol both of them are naturally aspirated the first one it's the 1.5 liter k-series engine uh, now this has a mild hybrid setup that means you get auto start stop functionality but you do not get pure electric drive in this case the engine it's good for making 75 kilowatts and 135 newton meters of torque and you get the option of a five-speed manual or a six-speed automatic that's a torque converter to pair it with 
The one nice thing about this engine is that you also get the option of all-wheel drive with it. That is something that does not exist in the segment. So that will be a first. Now let's come to the more interesting engine option and that's the 1.5 liter engine with the electric motor so which is the strong hybrid setup. Now the engine over here it makes 68 kilowatt of power and 122 newton meter of torque and the electric motor that makes 59 kilowatt of power and 141 newton meter of torque. The transmission it's an electronic automatic transmission so you only get that one option but the thing is that you know uh, if you add the sum of power and torque of both the electric motor and the engine you're not getting that same total output there. The total output of the entire powertrain that has actually been re regulated and we know the power figure and that stands at 85 kilowatts. So no matter what you do, you will not be getting more than 85 kilowatts of power. So that's there. Now we're done with the specs of the car. Let's move on to the interior so that we can show you what you get inside and how the experience over there will be. Now let's go. All right, so we are now inside the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider, and it feels a very familiar place to be. I think uh, there's a lot of elements here that have been shared between uh, Toyota and Maruti over here. But uh, let's start with the seats first. And I think the seat, it's snug, slightly small because uh, I think it's just my right size and I'm not a very tall or a huge person. So probably a little uh, people who are a little bigger will find a bit of a problem with this. Uh, the interior it's been done in pretty much all black only the top half uh, starting from here has been done in beige. There's little beige more black and uh, there's a lot of soft touch material around on the dash and all but there is a mix of hard touch stuff here as well. However everything it looks good to look at and only when you touch them only when you tap them do you really feel that there has been uh, quite a bit use of hard plastics but it doesn't look bad uh, the experience overall is pretty good now we cannot switch on the car because we do not have the key with us so we cannot show you what the screens look like but this over here it's a nine inch uh, screen now we've again used this on Maruti cars and we know what the experience is like so that's there you get all your added functionality here your Apple CarPlay your Android Auto everything is there uh, even this uh, climate control uh, unit in the center that's been taken over from Maruti and you have one single Single button here that's for switching off traction control you have a heads up display in the front you have a panoramic sunroof over here uh, then there is an interesting bit and that's the bit I want to show you there is this EV mode here now we have not driven the car but what I'm guessing is that what this does is it allows you to drive the car just in electric mode if you're not using any fuel and that's a good thing then you have ventilated seats here the options uh, for switching on both are right here in the center console i i would love to point this out that you know how the controls have been laid they're very they're very easy to reach they quickly fall to your hand and you don't have a problem finding them there's also a wireless charging mat right here and you have a few controls onto the right of the steering where is which is also where the ignition button is you the control for the heads up display is over here for the camera you also have a 360 degree camera in this car that we first saw on the Baleno. Uh, that same system I feel has been carried over. We haven't used the system. We can't really speak about the quality of the cameras, but uh, it is, uh, we know there's a lot of sharing that goes on between Toyota and Maruti and we, it's safe to assume that the system has come in from there. You also have an auto dimming IRVM and did I mention the panoramic sunroof? It's huge, looks great. I think uh, for the size of the car is going to be beneficial for both front and rear passengers and um, apart from that you have two cup holders here you have decent space in the side you can put one liter bottles in there and that is all we can talk about the front right now because as we don't have the key so we can't look at the cluster so why don't we hop in the back and tell you what the experience over there is like let's go hmm? all right in the back seat of the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider and the black theme that continues over here you can see uh, in each, uh, first things first uh, I think the headroom it's a little low I am 5'7 5'8 and I'm like just about reaching the limit I probably have like an inch more anyone who's six feet will definitely have a problem here and I think that's because of the sunroof that's the price you pay for a panoramic sunroof the sunroof you do get good access to it uh, the seats uh, now actually the seats over here they're not so well bolstered so the good thing is if you want to seat five here they'll be slightly more comfortable four they'll not be so tucked in but it's still a relatively comfortable experience the back right it feels uh quite upright and it's a comfortable sitting position although if i could have just leaned it over one step one more step i think there is fun added functionality to do that but uh, this is 
the most leaned it over if probably one more step of inclination was there then it would have been great there is ac vents here and uh, yes you do get ac vents but they are really tiny i mean uh, i don't know if they how effective they will be that something we'll only get to know once we drive the car but you do get ac vents uh, however tiny they might be you also have uh, charging sockets over here you have a usb type c a usb type a so that's really good on toyota's part because you get added convenience if you have a usb a charger you use that if you have a usb c type you use that uh, you don't get sun blinds over here that's something that i really miss uh, and and i mean there's a lot of glass area uh, but a lot of it is behind me so the quarter panel glass that's behind me and it's really huge so if if i could have actually it had been in my line of sight it would have added to that sense of airiness around the cabin and this is a black cabin so you do need some of that uh, that's i think something that's a little odd but nonetheless uh, it's a comfortable cabin to sit for at least people who are 5'8 like me so yeah on that and this is uh, all we've shown the car that we can show you right now let's just step outside and wrap this video up All right, so that was our walk around video of the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider. Let us know what you thought about the car in the comments box below. We are highly looking forward to that. And obviously, what do you think the price of this SUV should be? Seeing the kind of features it has, the kind of looks it has, and the kind of positioning it's going to be coming in, the kind of space it offers. What do you think is the right price for the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider? Because Toyota does not reveal the prices, so maybe they'll take a suggestion from you. That was all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.